Well, good morning. Last week, we were sharing like next steps vision, like namely that we're really looking at intentionally investing in leaders and leaders specifically of small groups, people who are have a heart to invest in the development of others. Uh, and that means both like Christians and people who are not yet uh, people of faith in God, in Jesus. Uh, it's that heart to invest in others. Those are the people that we want to invest in. And um, some of you thinking about that are going to say, I'm not ready. And there'll be various ways in which you'd express it. You know, like you might say, for example, oh, my house is not tidy enough or that you don't know the Bible enough or, or you know, and when you, you're not spiritual enough, your prayer life isn't enough. And then when you're ready, then you'll serve. Um, but sometimes, and this is what I want to say to you right now, it is the mission that actually helps you get ready. Like, I, I don't know about you, but like our house is mostly tidied when we've got people coming around. Like that's when all the dusting and all the rest of it starts to happen. There's something about the mission that draws us into alignment. Uh, and, and like the same is true, I think, with our prayer lives, you know, like the mission motivates prayer. <laughs> and, it, and in terms of knowing your Bible well enough, look, I've got to be honest with you, or having like the perfect theology and all the answers. The most important thing is that you have a living, dynamic relationship with Jesus, that, that you're under his authority, you're looking to follow him uh, and you experience him in different ways. You've got a track record of, of, of relationship with him. That That's the most important thing. Like over the years, I can tell you, my theology has changed. And if you think right now of the lives of the apostles, like you read through the book of the Acts, like they were ignorant, unschooled, ordinary uh, people and they knew it. Uh, and the mission kept them praying. Like if you think about Paul's request, he's like, he's Always in his letters, he's saying, like, please, would you pray for me that words would be given me? Please pray that I'd be bold, you know, and, and like clearly he's asking for that, you know, answer because he's struggling. He's struggling. Like think about Timothy, struggled with fear issues, had digestive problems because of his fear issues. Uh, you know, drink a little wine because of your frequent infirmities because of your fear issues. You know, it's all there if you read not just between the lines, but you get the context of what's going on in these letters. These guys are weak and their theology. Oh, my gosh. Like sometimes God directly had to intervene to correct their theology. Sometimes they had to correct each other. And even Peter needed to be corrected by Paul. And, and so like having it all together, like, like theologically, spiritually, all the rest of it isn't isn't really what what qualifies us to be useful to God. And, and this is the point I want to make today. Like I know there are other things about uh, in like Titus, Timothy, other places about qualifications of leadership. Uh, and, and, and I think sometimes we make more of that than actually is being said there. Like it talks about having your household in order. It doesn't mean that you've done the dusting. Like that's not in the detail. It just means you've got a functional home. Honestly, just being a parent at times can make you feel disqualified. Like I can remember one time and I was like tongue in cheek, like trying to pretend to the church in the midst of a sermon that I'm the perfect parent. It was tongue in cheek. But exactly at that moment, Nicola bursts out of like the childcare area, carrying Judah, who is screaming and shouting and like hitting her. And, you know, it's like, <laughs> like even the kind of joke tongue in cheek pretense of being the perfect parent I couldn't sustain. And, you know, like household in order, it doesn't mean perfect. And like all of us, I'm sure, have had times where where we've thought like, oh, my gosh, like looking at the state and my kids, how they're behaving. Like, how can I even think about being in ministry? Like we're broken. We're on a journey, we're on a journey together. It's the direction of travel. It's the way we have put our focus. Um, these are the things that matter, not being perfect. And we disqualify ourselves too quickly. And so this is the point I want to make today is this, that for the apostles, it was their weakness that made them humble enough to be usable by God. It was their weakness that made them humble enough to be usable by God. Pride is what disqualifies you. Pride comes before a fall and it's weakness that actually qualifies you. Now, I know there are plenty of proud spiritual leaders you've probably experienced, but 
we all know you can do ministry without God, right? But what, what I hope we're looking for is to really see God come in and, and have his way amongst us. And so to, to move towards that kind of acts, kind of like early Christianity kind of ministry, humility, vulnerability, these things are key. And so do not disqualify yourself just because you think you're not good enough, spiritual enough, theologically trained enough. If you have a dynamic relationship with Jesus where you're looking to be under his authority, and that includes reading the Bible, you're in. And if you've got that heart to care for others, you're in. And so what I want you to do, I want you to turn with me right now to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, We're going to look at this together. Uh, Just to give you a little bit of context, the verses we're about to read, uh, we're going to read from verse 7 down to verse 10. The the context is that uh, Paul is talking about uh, to the Corinthians about like actually they've got leaders in that church that like are kind of better than Paul in different ways and so Paul says look I have had amazing experiences with God like and he talks about some of them like amazing like being caught up to heaven like incredible supernatural experiences but he goes on to say this and, and so read this with me father I just pray speak to us through these words of the bible so so like because of all these great things that have been happening to Paul to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of these revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions and calamities. For when I am weak, then I'm strong. Did you get what it says in this passage? Like it's effectively saying the demonic issues in Paul's life were a gift, a gift. Like, how many of you think about, like, the bad things that are happening to you? You're like, whoa, this is such a... No, we want to get rid of those things, right? But it it literally says that there was a demonic issue, a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan. A messenger of Satan. And God's like, yeah, this is going to be great for you. And, like, okay, we, we don't know exactly what that thorn in the flesh was. Some people say it was a mental health issue because, in like, elsewhere, Paul talks about, you know, like, being out of his mind uh, you know, some uh, like you look in 2 Corinthians, you can think like maybe he was struggling with depression at times, like 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Other people say maybe it was like a physical health thing, like his eyesight, because he talks like it's to the Galatian church about like, you guys would have ripped your eyes out for me, you know, and, and he talks about other people writing for him and is having to write in big letters. Some people say it was a relationship problem. Maybe, you know, I was gonna say maybe kids, but like it, it, he didn't have kids. Uh, but but maybe some people say it was a relationship problem because like the the phrase thorn in the flesh was a Hebrew idiom for like difficult people um but we don't know the point is we don't have to know because that little phrase thorn in the flesh you can take it out and put your issue in there like for example how do you know that your particular issue with like struggling to keep a tidy house struggling with your organization problems struggling with your like Sometimes even with your mental health, how do you know that that isn't like a way that keeps you from becoming conceited because of the power of God that he wants to flow through you with? How do you know God's not even going to work that for good? Because biblically he does. We can read it right there. He works these things for good. And, And like, here's the thing. In this passage, Paul's saying to keep me from becoming conceited. He says it twice. Because becoming conceited, becoming proud that's what disqualifies us. Like, remember the empty, filled, poor principle? Like when we're praying, we're like emptying out. This is what I want. This is my stuff. This is my sin. I'm just emptying out so that we can be filled. And God cannot fill a vessel that's already full of pride. <laughs> Even spiritual pride. Look how much I pray. You know, he, he won't allow that. Like it doesn't work. It's not that he won't allow it. It just doesn't work. You can't fill something that's already full. All right, so let me share with you a little bit of my stuff because I think this is going to help and liberate some of you. 
Um, I, I was struggling this week. I, I had pr different pressures on my life and I didn't want to get out of bed. I just didn't. I'm like, and I didn't have to. The kids are away. Uh, and, and so no one's waking me up at like ridiculous o'clock in the morning because they want to play Lego. And so, and so, yeah, I, I, uh, I could. But as I was lying there, not wanting to get out of bed, I thought this is so dysfunctional and I'm a pastor, for goodness sake. And so I began to talk to God and I grabbed my phone and I began to journal. And I want to read to you my journal because like I say, I think it's going to liberate some of you. So here we go. You ready? Good morning, Father. I do not want to get out of bed. Help me talk with you this morning. Father, what would you say to me? Now listen to what he said. There's some deep things in this. I have always loved you and I am preparing you for an expected end. I work towards the finish I have already planned. John, you question whether all will be saved. John, here is the point. I am sovereign over my creation. I am working all things together for good and I have chosen to harden hearts to create a world in which mercy is essential. Now, I probably need to pause at this point. Like some of you think like, wait a minute, where's the theology here? If you go to Romans chapter nine, you will see it says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Uh, if you go through to Romans chapter 11, God says that uh, Paul writes and he says, God has actually bound all men over so that he may have mercy on all. So, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of theological context to that. So this is the thing. Uh, I have chosen to harden hearts to create a world in which mercy is essential. The only way forward is the way of mercy. For a person to be saved, they must accept my mercy, that they need my mercy. They must ask for my mercy and live the way of mercy towards all. John what you have been hoping for is that your life would come to a place of strength through my power so that you would no longer need my mercy. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> and it's true. Uh, John, mercy remains forever. Until you accept your need of mercy, you will never have peace. Accept your weak and fragile state. Isn't that part of the revelation of Brother Lawrence? Some of you know the story of Brother Lawrence. Like he, he was convinced he was going to hell. And then he, and then he just realizes, you know what? I do deserve hell. I'm just going to love God anyway and discover the love of God towards him in his vulnerability. Anyway, you can read his story another time. Isn't that part of the revelation of Brother Lawrence? Weak, incompetent, deserving of hell and therefore wholly given over to the one who is love. John, the way to self-actualization and self-fulfillment is the way of pride. Accept that you are weak. Accept that you are dependent. Yes, think of my servant John Wimber, weak and struggling with his weight to the end. Maybe some of you never heard of John Wimber. Uh, John Wimber was greatly used by God, particularly in the 80s, 90s, that sort of time. He started a group of churches called the Vineyard. There was a whole like music ministry thing, like that's where the Vineyard music comes from. Uh, churches all over the world being gratefully in influential actually on like Alpha HTB those guys like the whole uh, Holy Spirit being right front and center in the Alpha course uh, that was really his influence um, and you know new wine movement renewal of the kind of established churches a lot of that was the influence of John Wimber as he in was like introducing the gifts of the Spirit the ways of the Spirit but the guy like really had poor discipline around his diet and uh, was very overweight and spoke really up, like openly about that. Like just very humble and fragile around that. Anyway, so he's like a real role model for me. That's that's all you need to know. Yes, think of my servant John Wimber, weak and struggling with his weight to the end. John, it is OK that you are weak. It is OK that you are vulnerable. It is OK that you are small. When people see your weakness, they have permission to know you. Remember what you said about, I better not mention this person's name. <laughs> uh, but because this particular person insists on being strong, they cannot be known. I'm going to say that again. Because this person insists on being strong, they cannot be known. That is how Christians become Pharisees. <laughs> oh, 
We've got to share weakness. This is, this is how God concluded with me. Be weak, be humble, be known. Isn't that profound? Like, I mean, you can weigh like whether you think that's God or not, but like I can give you scripture for everything that God spoke uh, to, to me through that. And like really interestingly, all this stuff about you'll never get beyond my mercy. Uh, my mercy is going to remain. You'll never get beyond my mercy. Um, I wrote all of this, eventually got out of bed, went downstairs, made myself some breakfast and opened the Bible app. And the verse of the day was all about what? Mercy. And so I'm like, okay, God, like you got me. And, and so this is really what I want to encourage you with. If you want to build relationship with others, you will need to show your weakness, not just your strength. They'll admire you for your strength. They'll know you through your weakness. And that's actually how we come to know God as we open up our weakness to him. And as a leader, the kind of leaders that we're looking for are leaders that can role model humility, vulnerability and weakness, because that's the way that we're going to be walking in the empty, fill and poor. And so we're looking for leaders who can actually open up and say, I'm weak, too, and role model that to those we're pastoring. But also hopefully reveal that God's strength is also being made known in the midst of of our own weakness. All right, we're going to stop there. I want you to take one minute and if you're with other people, I want to challenge you to share one weakness with one another. And I don't mean like that kind of job interview thing. Oh, like, yeah, my my weakness is I'm 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 sometimes I work too hard or something that's, you know, that you might not even think of as a weakness, you know. Share a genuine weakness uh, with someone who's with you. And if you're on your own, write it down. Just take a moment to think and write down a weakness of yours. One minute, go for it. All right, Father, well, thank you so much that, God, you choose the weak things of this world to shame those that are wise. God, lead us as leaders to lead one another in this beautiful walk of weakness, emptying ourselves, being filled with your strength and pouring out your glory in the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, church. You are so, so loved.